The novel starts with an interrogation scene with a woman being interrogated at Heathrow um, as she's trying to find out, fly out. She's a British Muslim woman. Um, I've never had quite that experience, but there were a number of years post 9-11 where if you got together enough Muslims, Pakistani Muslims, American Muslims, British Muslims, at some point the conversation would turn to airport interrogations. Um, and I did have for a number of years when I was uh, traveling into America, which I did a lot, I'd be taking the secondary examination room. And it happened the first time because of some computer glitch. But every time I was in that room and I would look around at the other people in that room and, and they were inevitably, to be crude about it, not white. Um, and you would, I would get really nervous. And I would play out in my head, I would imagine the questions I might be asked um, and how I would answer them, even though none of it ever happened. So in some ways, you know, that's the start of that novel um, is not something I d directly experienced, but I was made to imagine the experience of it time and time again. My name is Kamila Shamsi and I've written Home Fire. It's a novel set in various places, but primarily London, also a bit in Massachusetts and a bit in Syria and a tiny bit in Karachi. Um, it's set in 2014 and 15, so it's quite contemporary. And it follows the lives of five, well, broadly speaking, British Muslim characters, although their relationship to that phrase British Muslim varies quite a lot. Um, and it's two families, they are three siblings, and then on the other side of the tracks, as it were, there's the Home Secretary and his son. Um, and it's really what happens when these lives collide. And, and in the backdrop of it is the fact that the three siblings in question, their father was a jihadi who died on his way to Guantanamo. So of course that sets up the two families against each other. Sometimes you get very lucky as a writer because you're without a novel to work on and someone hands you an idea. Um, in my case, I was between novels um, I was at that point where I really wanted to know what the next novel was going to be, but I just had nothing in my head. Um, and I got an email from a man I had never met um, called Jatinder Verma, who runs the Tara Arts Theatre in London. Um, and he invited me for a coffee. And when we met, he said, uh, I really love your novels. I love the way you do dialogue. I want you to write a play for me. And I said, but I don't know how to write a play. And he said, yes, I thought you'd say that. So why don't you adapt a play? Something like Antigone. Um, he said, you know, I think that's really a play you could do a lot with. And if you could just think about some contemporary Asian or British Asian context for it, just go away and think about it. Um, and I said, all right. And I thought, you know, I do love the theater, but I knew that I have no idea how to write this. I have no idea how to write a play. And I went away and I reread Antigone, which I hadn't looked at since I was at university and only dimly remembered. And very quickly, I came to see how I would want to transpose a contemporary story onto it. Because it is, among the many other things it's about, it is also what happens when an individual takes on what they think of as an unjust edict by the state. And of course, any state is going to, to be um, sort of prime for an adaptation around that. Um, and I did try, I have to say, I did try to think of it as a play but I have a novelist's brain. I get asked about research a lot. Um, and actually for this novel, I had to do less research than I've had to do for um, the last couple, which have been, have at least had sections that are, you know, um, more historically based in a time I don't know. Um, for things like the, the contemporary politics or just the experience of being a Muslim in Britain um, and feeling yourself um, under surveillance of a certain kind. That didn't really require research. That just, you know, it was already in my head. Um, and it's things that are and have been of interest to me. The one area that I did have to do research was there is a section that is set um, in Raqqa in Syria, um, which is not a place I know and not a place I can go to, um, or really any of us would want to go to. Um, and so for that I had to, you know, do research the, the old-fashioned, well, not the old-fashioned way, I was going to say, go online, that now sounds like the old-fashioned way. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of material out there. Um, but the odd part of it, of course, was as I was researching Islamic State and their recruitment and what life is like, I became very conscious of being 
a Muslim sitting in Britain looking up these things. And within the book, there's, there's a point when one of the characters sort of says to the other something. She uses the expression GWM. And he says, I don't know what that is. And she says, Googling while Muslim. Um, so I was very aware of Googling while Muslim. Um, and it is actually discomforting. And I did also then work into the novel that my sense that as a novelist, I can't just go and research anything. But I was sort of sitting there aware of the fact that I was researching something that might cause a little flag to go up somewhere in some you know, room somewhere. Um, and there was a part of my brain that said, this is absurd. I'm a writer. Um, and it's perfectly natural that I want to l look for these things. And there was another part of my brain that was actually saying, so what will I say if someone comes knocking on my door saying, and why are you interested in these matters? Um, but then that all ends up going into the book as well. So it all ends up being research. I think when you're working off another text, um, one of the things you need to do when you're thinking about things like how do I negotiate this very old text with the contemporary world um, is you need to put the old text aside. Um, you know, so I, I very much had Antigone in mind in the beginning and I was reading different translations of it and, and pulling out certain things that were helpful to me from different translations, or there were different ways I had of thinking around the story. Um, but there did come a point when I just put it away. And the way I think about it is, it's not even that Antigone was the structure or the skeleton of the book, it's Antigone was in the marrow of the book. Um, and then I went and, and, you know, there was a the marrow and then I got the skeleton and then I put the flesh and then I put the skin. It sounds a bit grisly now once you put it that way, um, but not irrelevant to Antigone with its dead bodies. Um, so yes, what you do is, is you take what is useful to you. Um, but the other part of it is I'm interested in the contemporary story that I'm doing. I mean, that is my interest is this world today. And the fact that there are certain things that when you look at Greek tragedy strike you as timeless. Um, certain battles, whether it's between the individual or the state, or it's the idea of what is grief? How do we express grief? What do we owe to each other in love and loyalty? Uh, what do we owe to a state in love and loyalty? Those kinds of questions. So you, you take those questions and then you place them within the form that you know. The novel has five sections, um, and each section is told from the point of view of one um, of five protagonists. And it it wasn't right away that I knew what that structure would be. Um, at first, I had thought that perhaps the novel would be told from the point of view of um, the eldest of the three siblings, Isma. Um, and then I realized very quickly there's a great deal she doesn't know that I would want in the story. Um, and once I started to think about, along those lines, I realized that a lot of, of the story is about the secrets people are keeping from each other, all the things, the misunderstandings, so two people looking at the same moment in different ways. Um, and I, I realized I wanted that on the page. I wanted those different ways of seeing. Um, and also I wanted the different ways of seeing a character. So you have the two sisters thinking about their brother very differently. Um, you have Isma thinking about um, the home secretary in a certain way and his son thinking about him in a, another way. And then you actually come to the home secretary himself. Um, and so at a certain point, it just became clear that that I would give each one of them their sections. And, and um, I would hope that part of the appeal of the novel would be for the readers to figure out what they think of everyone's points of view, particularly when there are discrepancies in, in people's opinions and experiences of things. Um, so it became a sort of built in, uh, the structure sort of just seemed to come naturally once I, once I had worked that out. Someone did say to me, oh, it's very clever. It's sort of like the five acts of a play. So now I'd like to pretend that that was in my mind all along, but of course it wasn't. <laughs>